Okay, goedemiddag. I'm Brandon, as Olaf just said. Thanks for coming today. <clears throat> so what we want to talk about today is power. Where does it come from? How do we get it? How do we utilize it? How do our components use it? And then how can we optimize that power so that we get the best performance out of our system? So I'll start with just a little introduction into who we are as a company, as well as who we are as people. Shinyata is a company we started about 20 years ago. It was founded by Kaylin Gabriel, uh, who's still the chief designer uh, and, and owner of the company. And Kaylin, like us, is an audio guy. Yeah? So he's, got a, he's always had a system at home, enjoys music, enjoys the hobby. And <clears throat> he's got a friend that owns a shop, so he would hang out. They would talk about things, come up with ideas. And at some point in time, they had this idea to, or rather, Kalen got inspired to build a power cable. And he did. It was called the King Cobra. It was the first product that Shinyata ever built. And uh, it's essentially the beginning to everything that, that we do now today. So I'll give you a little more background on Kalen so you have an idea who he is and what his inspirations were where he gets his, uh, his ideas. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about me, and then we'll go into power itself. So Kalen is a master electrician. He comes from a family of master electricians. He's also an engineer. We have many in our, in our industry. But he's also a quantum physicist, which is a little more unique. And uh, during the Cold War, so back in the 1980s, Kalen worked for our government uh, for a division called the National Security Administration, basically the part of the government that, that spies on people. And uh, he had a job with top security clearance, and he was part of a project to develop what were called low-level signal acquisition devices. So what that simply means is taking a large noise space in finding a very small bit of information and extracting that so it's understandable. So if you, if you can imagine, that's a very useful technology if you're trying to spy on people. So after the Cold War ends, Kalen becomes a civilian, <clears throat> like the rest of us, and he enters the field of developing high-speed data transmission technology. So this was in the early 90s. This was when the World Wide Web was becoming what it is today, uh, really at the beginning of it, and data data transmission and speed was really, really important. So these are a couple experiences from Kalen's past that really have an influence on what we do today at Shinyata. Uh, I met Shinyata personally about 17 years ago. I've been in, in the audio business for about 23 years, and I was working in a shop at the time. It was a big shop, you know, so we had a lot of different companies that would come to us they wanted us to sell their products. And if you've been in this hobby for a while, 20 years ago, power was very, very different from what it is today. It was poorly understood. Most of the manufacturers that were building power products were building them much in the same way they built signal cable products. There wasn't a good understanding of what needed to be addressed when it came to power. People simply thought it was a 50 hertz sine wave. If you can get the 50 hertz sine wave without anything else, that's all you needed to do. Uh, we, we have a very different understanding today of power. And I think Shinyata is, is really one of the companies that helped to establish power as, a, as, a, as a, viable, a viable sector to the audio industry. And also, we've, uh, we've defined things more than anybody else has with regard to power. So we'll talk a little bit about some of those things. But let's talk first about power, right? So we know that electricity is out there, right? It comes from some power factory or a wind turbine or solar panels or something. But it's created and it comes to us. Our homes, everything in them are connected to that. We become part of that. So as soon as we attach to the grid, we are part of the power, the greater power grid. And, um, and then when we plug something in our home into that, then that becomes also an extension of that entire power system. And that's important to understand, too. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about the influences of power, what's outside versus what's inside, and, uh, and how we address all of that. Um, so there's, 
Let's talk a little bit about some commonly held thoughts in power. One of them, so we're talking about outside and inside, one of the thoughts is that all the bad stuff with power is out there. So all the noise, all the, all the, all the little gremlins that are infecting our system come from outside the house. And they come in and they infiltrate our beautiful stereo components. And there's truth to that. We can certainly show that. We can see line distortion. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so yes, there's definitely that. But we're going to take that idea a little further in just a minute. Another commonly held thought is that power is a, a linear occurrence, meaning you turn the power of your amplifier on. And if you imagine power as a rope, you know, the amplifier is on and it's taking power out of the wall like this. You turn the volume up and it goes faster, right? So this is kind of a linear approach to power. That's completely wrong, actually. So we're going to discard that idea and, and reestablish how power works. Power is actually a dynamic occurrence. So instead of a linear thing, power is happening in instantaneous moments. So let's go into a little bit into how Shinyata understands power. The first concept I'm going to throw at you today uh, is called the source of sound. So when we say the word source, we often think about a streamer or DAC, maybe a turntable, a CD player, anything that provides a signal, right? That feeds our system. And, and that's true. Those are sources. They are providing information that ultimately becomes what we hear. But at a more fundamental level, the real source of sound in our system is power. All the way, literally all the way until this very moment, until this speaker driver, the entire signal path is electrical. Everything that happens in our system is electrical. It is only at this very last instance that that electrical signal is converted into acoustic energy that we can understand and hear. So if you were to go home tonight to make dinner, but you started with very poor quality ingredients, you can imagine your dinner is not going to be very good as well. It's the same truth with power. If you start with poorly instituted power in your system, your system is not going to perform to its ultimate or best potential. That's the source of sound. <clears throat> and in the greater pyramid of stereos, um, we consider the fundamental or the most important part of a system to be the room, right? If you, don't, if you have a terrible room, then nothing else can work, right? You can put the best thing, but you're always going to be fighting that room. The second most important part of a system is power. Why is that? Power provides a fundamental and uh, very noticeable performance enhancement when it's instituted or implemented correctly. So when we do power right, it makes a change to our system that you won't get with anything else. You can buy the best speakers, biggest amplifiers, most expensive sources, but they're never going to give you what properly implemented power can provide your system. So let's talk about why that is, and then I'll show you ultimately what that sounds like. So I already explained to you that current is a dynamic event, right? It's not a linear event, but rather it's, it's happening in dynamic moments. So why, why is that? I'll explain what's happening. So we all know that a power signal is a sine wave, yeah? It's a 50 hertz sine wave. The way our power supplies work in all of our components is they take in current at the peak and valley of the sine wave, so at the top and the bottom of the sinus. At those moments, the rectifiers inside the power supplies open and they accept in current. And they stay open as long as they need to to satisfy that need for current. So when we understand that power is not a linear event, but rather a, an instantaneous or dynamic event, being able to supply the power supply with that requirement dramatically affects performance. So we call this, at Shinyata, we call this DTCD, or dynamic transient power delivery. And that simply means that when an amplifier or any other component says, now, I need current now, how quickly can we deliver it? We have a couple ways to measure that, and normally I would do a test for you. I've got this handy little 
device that we use in the US. Most electricians would carry this. It tells them the voltage, line distortion, and several other things. And it can also measure peak current, which is what we're interested in. Unfortunately, uh, it's not working in our shop, in the shop today. Uh, we are having very, very inconsistent results from this guy. So I'm going to show you a video instead. The video is going to be Kalen doing the demo at our factory. It would give, give you the same results as if we did it here and it was functioning. But again, since we can't get conclusive results, I'm going to show you uh, what's supposed to happen. <laughs> so give me a second here and we'll get that up and running. And the more current that you have available, the worse that turns out for that black power cord. So one power, imagine one power cord can do that. You've got a whole chain of them in a system. You know, and if you're plugged into a, a five euro power strip from the local hardware store, all of those things are, are just completely, completely stripping away that instantaneous current delivery. And that has a really significant effect on sound uh, and, and really a host of other things too that we'll talk about. Um, <clears throat> so the second thing that we want to address is noise. So we talked a little bit about noise, right? Talked about that idea that all the bad stuff is outside coming into your home. And as, as I told you, there is truth to that. But we know that, so we've already established power is dynamic. We know that power is uh, a high frequency event. So, you know, there's more than 50 hertz. There's a lot of information well into the megahertz bandwidth. And power is a near field event as well. Meaning that the closer you are to whatever you're doing, the greater the effect will be on it. And this is the case with noise. So your system itself is the greatest contributor of noise in your system. So your, no your system is infecting itself, if you will. What does that mean? So when you plug a power cable into this, this DAC, right, this streamer, this has a bunch of high frequency digital chips in it. And those chips, they create UHF, ultra high frequency interference. And this power cord becomes like an antenna. It simply takes that noise and it follows the power cord. You plug it into the wall or into a power strip and the next device next to it and it picks that noise right up and it carries it into itself. So we call this component to component interference. The components can essentially infect one another with the noises that they're generating. And uh, Nobody addresses that except for Shinyata. If we, if, we, if we look at that commonly held thought that the bad stuff is outside and we want to block it, you know, most manufacturers are basically building a firewall, right? So they're, they're blocking all, everything that's above 50 hertz from entering the system. But by doing so, you're also creating a reflective surface to push all of that system-based noise right back into the system. So you're doing, in our opinion, more damage than good by building this sort of a firewall or preventative system. Our answer to that is we build filters that are, first of all, they're entirely passive, which means they, they're, they're not active. They're also not part of the signal path. Our filters are in parallel, so they're always outside of the, of the signal. And they're omnidirectional. They don't care where the noise is, they don't discriminate. It could be outside, it could be your refrigerator, or it could be the components themselves. And so the CCI filters, they, they simply absorb noise. Naturally, we use that type of technology in our power conditioners, but Shinyata is the only company to include noise filters in the actual IEC connector itself. When you plug this connector into your amplifier, your, any device that you have, because again, power is in your field, this becomes an extension of the power supply. This becomes part of your component. Remember, as like we were talking earlier, as soon as you plug into the grid, you become part of it. So you plug into that power supply, you become part of the component. And if we can capture that noise immediately where it comes out or potentially enters the power supply, we're already really ahead of the game. So. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to use, I'm going to use this guy. We're going to do a little demo. 
you know, in a perfect world, I would arrive with a nice scope and I'd show you a sine wave and we'd generate noise and you would see it on the waveform, but that requires about 30 kilograms of, of gear and my suitcase allowance doesn't let me bring that with me, so we're gonna use this little guy. So this is 20 years old and it's a very simple device. It's a, uh, a, a power line noise amplifier. So what it does is it takes any noise that's on the power line and it makes it louder. It also has a display. It, it's relatively arbitrary. The numbers don't necessarily mean anything other than we can use them in this, in this test to show you how this product works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna connect this into the wall, turn it on, and you will hear it. Sorry, it's not a very pretty sound, that's okay. All right, so I have this set. The display, as you can see, is reading around 105, 104. It's bouncing back and forth, but you can hear it. And I told you, our filters don't care where the noise comes from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug this power cable in to the outlet next to the outlet this one is plugged into. So it's not connected directly but simply it's going to be adjacent. So you hear the noise has changed significantly and we've dropped now to about 30 on our display. Now what happens if I actually put the power cord in line? Well now you don't hear anything and we see the display is at about one. So that's the result of a single power cord and what it can do with regard to absorbing noise. Notice the words that I've been using is noise reduction. Uh, we never talk about elimination because elimination comes back to essentially building that firewall and, uh, and that's never a good thing uh, because it also lim uh, it limits current when, when we work that way. So we talk about noise reduction. The Denali has up to 70 decibels of noise reduction, for example, which is more than twice what any of my competitors can, can claim. But it's still only a reduction. And that's why you know, we can argue using a power cord like this, you know, in conjunction with something like the Denali, still has an effect, because we can still capture more noise. We can capture it particularly right there at the power supply. Um, so yes, the power supplies do have filters. Matter of fact, a transformer itself is a form of a filter, but it's only a reduction. And uh, the more noise that we can reduce before it enters the power supply, uh, you're going you're gonna to definitely benefit from that. Your power supply is going to benefit from that, from that as well. Um, to explain that a little further too, we're going to go back um, <clears throat> Uh, when I get to another technology we're going to talk about, you, you'll understand that there's actually a, two things happening, both with instantaneous current and noise, that you know, if, we can, if we can work with both of those things, it, it's kind of a, a, like a twofer. You know? it's, a, it's, a, it's a double benefit. We can, we can reduce noise, and then we can also increase the current, which helps to reduce noise as well. Remember when I explained how the power supply works. The power supply accepts current to the peak and valleys of the sine wave. And the rectifier opens up, and it stays open as long as it has to, to satisfy its current need. So any noise that's on the line there, any corruption to that signal is going to enter the power supply. Now the, the, the various filters and aspects inside the power supply are going to reduce it, but they're not going to eliminate it. It's still there. So if we can eliminate it before it goes into the power supply, it's going to work better and it's going to sound better. Um, so we've talked about, particularly with, with regard to noise, we've talked about the CCI technology, component to component interference. The Denali, for example, as well as our flagship Triton, incorporates three different variations of noise filtration. Uh, the first one is the CCI filters I just described. The second is called an NIC, or a noise isolation chamber. It's actually the first noise reduction technology Kalen defined, and it utilizes essentially a copper tube that's, f that's filled with a crystalline substance. 
and the, the wire simply passes through that and that technology absorbs a certain bandwidth of, of noise. And then the third technology that's involved in the Denali and Triton is called a QRBB. And <clears throat> what the QRBB is, is it's essentially a storage device for electrons. Uh, it's, it was basically, de Kalen developed it, we've patented it, so if you really, if you really want to know the ins and outs of the QRBB, you can read our patents on it. But the easiest way to think of it is it's like a balloon. It fills up with electrons. And when there's a demand on the line, it simply releases that energy. It does so without any delay, without any phase shift. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a device, it's, a, it's based in a law, a physics law called the Coulomb law, which was defined in the 19th century by a French physicist. Um, and it has two benefits. The first one is, as you can imagine, since it supplies an extra inrush of energy, it can, it can satisfy an amplifier's need and actually make it more dynamic. So if we have an entire system that's running off of a single circuit from your panel, <clears throat> if you plug your amplifier into the Denali, into one of the high current outputs on the Denali, it'll actually sound more dynamic as opposed to less dynamic. But the second thing that the QRBB technology does, so if you recall my story of the rectifiers, the rectifiers open to let in current and they stay open <coughs> until the current supply is satisfied. The QRBB essentially supports the current inrush so that the rectifier stays open for a shorter amount of time. And in so doing, it also lets less noise into the system. So it's another way of noise reduction. Simply by reducing that, that, that amount of time the rectifier has to stay open, we've now reduced that pathway for any, any additional system noise. Um, and that's another, that's another aspect, too, that, that I wanted to mention to you as well, is that, that noise, uh, you know, there, there are various ways to reduce noise. And this one, even though it's not taking the noise off the line, it's reducing the noise into the power supply simply because the power supply is working more efficiently. So if we can, if we can reduce further on top of that, the whole, the whole circuit becomes more efficient at its job. Everything that Shinyata does right now is made out of copper. We use copper with copper with copper uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, copper is a very high conductivity. Silver is a little more conductive, about 8 or 9%, but we don't like the way that silver sounds, so we, we stay with copper. And we're consistent with our metal because every time you transfer a signal through a different metal, through a different connector, connection, solder joint, it changes it. Now we realize we have to make connections and we have to, we, we have to do that. We can't have, everything can't be a single piece of metal. But uh, utilizing copper across the entire range of products maintains, uh, first of all, consistency in sound as well as a consistency in signal transfer. We take that even a step further inside of our power conditioners and our higher end speaker cables by using a technology called sonic welding. Of course, we still solder products, but in places where current is more significant or we are trying to pay attention to it, utilizing sonic welding, uh, sonic welding essentially eliminates any junction or any connection. So if you've ever seen a plastic ball, it's got a ridge or a seam around the middle of it, that ridge is a sonic weld. It takes two pieces, puts them together, and injects a high frequency energy to create a molecular bond at that, at that location. Um, we do that with metal. So you can clearly see where the wire and the solder stops and that piece of copper begins. That's a sonic weld. You can no longer tell the difference between the copper and the wire. This, we can measure this. We can put a scope and we can see how this connection affects the signal. This doesn't exist. This is unmeasurable. It also has no impedance. It has no effect on the, uh, on the current delivery. And so that's why Kalen felt it was worthwhile that we invest in this technology to build our power conditioners and our speaker cables. The machine itself is this thing up here. 
Um, it's kind of big, but uh, a, solder, a, a solder desk is about $200, $300. The sonic weld machine is uh, $80,000. So it's a much more significant investment. But Kaylin felt it was, it was important for us to have it. So the last thing I want to bring up before we do some listening, and I promise I'll stop talking so much, uh, is our medical division. And I bring this up because it's, uh, it's just a little more uh, absolute confirmation into the technologies that we do. So one of our customers, who is a doctor, took, we have a device in the US. It's, uh, it's similar to this device. So it's simply a plug with an extension on it, you know, of about, what, 10, 12 centimeters. And it works like the power cable demo that I did. It's a parallel filter. So you plug it into a parallel outlet and it absorbs noise and reduces noise in the overall system. So he brought that into his operating studio and plugged it in and it made a difference. He saw, he saw a difference. So uh, this particular doctor, this heart surgeon, uh, he works in an electrophysiology lab. Electrophysiology is where they take a scope and they, they put it in your leg, in this artery, and it goes up into your heart and at the tip of the scope, there are 20 micro cameras. And the doctor puts on a virtual reality goggle and he's able to see a 3D image of your heart. As you can imagine, that requires a lot of technology. These hospital rooms, these operating studios, are filled with electronics. And consequently, it creates a huge amount of noise. And there are all sorts of, they've, they've tried to address them with chokes and all such, you know, isolation transformers, a whole host of traditional conventional technologies, none of which have worked. So after he discovered that it made a difference, he contacted Shinyata, let us know. And Kaylin, who is uh, always up for a good challenge and always loves an opportunity to express some creativity, took it upon himself to start working on products for the medical field. And we now have a separate company, it's called Clear Image Scientific, and we build products for electrophysiology studios. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So here, this is a trace, basically intercardiac trace. This is the heart, that's a heartbeat. This is unfiltered. Exact same thing, filtered. Notice you can now actually see where the heartbeat is, taking out all that noise. That's just on an EKG. Imagine what that does to the virtual reality goggles when the doctor's looking at somebody's heart. Uh, the doctors have now told us that our, our technology is so effective that it will help them save people's lives. And I share that, like I say, just simply because in, in the hospital, it isn't about sound, right? It isn't about our perception or our opinions. It either works or it doesn't. You're either saving people's lives or you're not. It's that straight up. So, so uh, the, the, you know, this is, this is just a nice ex exhibit of, you know, our, our technology really, really at work. Uh, it's also the approach he takes in designing products. Y you know, we, we make expensive power cables. There are more expensive, a lot more expensive on the market. But regardless, we understand that if you buy this power cable, you're spending your money on it. We want you to get everything that you're paying for. He really believes that if you're going to spend your hard-earned money to buy our products, that you should get the value out of that product. You know? and, and that's why our pricing is, is a lot different. We don't make 10 and 15,000 euro power cables, S simply because it's almost impossible, just in terms of the cost of materials. <laughs> Again, it's about maximizing the, the signal potential that we have we realize that everything isn't sonic welded. We realize that there are different metals, um, but those are things beyond our control. What's happening in this component, I can't control what DCS does in terms of design. I can certainly advise them if they come to me and ask for suggestions or ideas, but what they're gonna do is what they're gonna do to satisfy whatever it is that they, 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 they decide is right. I can tell you that DCS uses my products because I installed them in their sound room. Um, and a number of other manufacturers as well. So the value of what we do is, is you know, certainly extends beyond the, the consumer side as well. We have a lot of manufacturers that 
you know, that know what these products can do, the potential that they can release within their systems. And, you know, a company like DCS that's designing products at that level realizes that this unleashes another realm of potential that they can extend the performance of their product. We've all experienced break-in, right? You buy something, you take it home, you plug it in, and it sounds good, but it doesn't sound like the one you heard at the shop. And it gets better, and then it gets worse, and it gets better, and it, gets, you know, it goes through that break-in cycle, and eventually it evens out, and it becomes the product that you ultimately bought. Uh, back at the very beginning of the company, Kalen invested in, uh, in cryogenic treatments. So we have a cryogenic system. If you're not familiar with cryogenics, it's the process of taking something and lowering the temperature to a very, very cold point and then slowly bringing it back up to room temperature. Kalen started examining things like break-in, cryogenic treatment, and also directionality. If you've ever taken a cable and maybe put it in the wrong direction, you've noticed it sounds a little different. Uh, as he was exa examining them, he found that these three phenomena have a similarity at the molecular level. And once he understood that, he built a machine. We call it the kinetic phase inversion process machine, or KPIP for short. Uh, it's a long, convoluted title. But essentially, it's our break-in machine. And it's not a conventional break-in technology. You can go out and you can buy boxes from other people that simply run a lot of current. You can plug your cables in. It runs a lot of current through them. And those can actually do more damage than good if you're not, if you're not careful. The KPIP machine affects something at a much more fundamental molecular level. And uh, we don't really talk about how the technology works because uh, we don't want anybody to steal it. But suffice to say, I can send this cable home with you and ask you to use it and, and, and not treat it and ask you to use it for 10 years, 24 hours a day. So basically constantly. I can take the same cable and treat it for two days on our KPIP machine and it will outperform the cable you've had for 10 years. Uh, it, is a f it's, it, it, it creates that much of a fundamental change in the sound. So we use it across our entire product range. Everything that we build goes through this KPIP process. And what that ultimately means is if you buy a Shinyata product and you take it home, within about 20 or 30 minutes, it's at 90 to 95% of the performance of its lifetime. Further, you never have to go through the, through the roller coaster break-in period. It'll only get better. Um, and again, it's, it's already almost completely there in terms of it just really needs to sit and settle in your system. So the, the KPIP function is, is very useful both from a performance standpoint but also you know, for customers. You take it home and it does what it's supposed to do. You don't have to go through that break-in period. So we have, we have two, two varieties in our series. We have uh, what we call a noise reduction power cable, which is what I demonstrated earlier to yes. you. Yes. And then we also have what we call our EF series. And that series doesn't have the noise filter built into it. Built into it. We designed it to be used uh, for the feed into our power conditioners or sometimes for amplifiers. It has a, a slightly different presentation, um, and some people prefer that. It's a little has a little more rhythm. Um, so when we go from this guy, actually we have two new power cables coming in this series. So I'll have two noise reduction power cords, and they're going to be both under 500 euro. Um, so we'll be at under 500 euro for noise reduction technology. And then the next series up, which is our delta, that's what's feeding the amplifier right now, uh, is I think that 800 for the delta NR? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so 800, 800 euro, and then you go to our alpha cable, which is this guy here, yes. which is 11, I think. 11. And then you go to the sigma, which is the big guy, it's at three, right? Yeah, sure. yeah. Now you don't want to do this because this creates an induction coil, so yeah. this is actually really bad. <laughs> right, it's a filter, yeah, it's a filter. Uh, that's bad for sound, but um, yeah, no, they are very flexible. Do you use stranded or uh, solid? Stranded. Yeah. So the actual geometry of our wire is stranded bundles that are wrapped around an air core. So we have a central air core, and then all the cables, or all, the, all the strands in their bundles are wrapped around that. We call that VTX, or virtual tube technology. Because the reason we do that, are you familiar with skin effect? Yeah. Yeah, so skin effect is where 
when you pass a signal over a wire, it, it, the, the bulk of the signal tends to gravitate towards the middle of the cable. And so you get faster, higher, higher transmission on the outside or the skin of the cable, whereas the, the center of it tends to, tend to weigh things down. So by eliminating a central core, instead of having all those bundles, you know, all those, those uh, stranded bundles together, you space them apart and you eliminate that skin effect. It was always near.